Hey guys, Steven is here and I'm back to you with another S23 Ultra video which is a part of my S23 Ultra series where I'm putting this phone to the test against other smartphones on the market and even against professional cameras to discover its limits. So naturally I want to squeeze maximum quality out of the phone camera and for that I'm gonna need some lenses and filters. So I messaged Freewell, something like, hey, can you make some filters for the S23 Ultra? And the answer was, okay. These accessories are a whole ecosystem for the phone designed to elevate your camera game. Let's take a look at what the system looks like and how it works. First of all, of course, there is a case for S23 Ultra with magnetic mounts that allow you to easily install filters. Also, it has these threaded lenses just like on a regular camera. So now let's talk about what they can do to the image. Now, as you might already know from my S23 Ultra series, the phone can produce stunning results when filming cinematic videos. And for that, it's very important to have natural look and motion blur. It's a very subtle effect, but subconsciously it looks more pleasing to the viewer's eye. Now, if you want to know more, in this video I discuss the settings you have to use in order to achieve that. Long story short, if you're filming in 8K 30fps, your shutter speed has to be double of your frame rate, 1 60th. The problem is, if you're using that frame rate and filming during bright day, your image will be overexposed. So to compensate that, you need to use ND filters. Let me show you. Okay, so ND filters come in that case. Let me show you how they work. So inside the case, there are different density of ND filters, which actually act like sunglasses. Okay, so for the best results possible, you need to go to manual, all manual mode. So you go to more tab and then you go to pro video. There are two settings. So one is ISO, we keep it as low as possible in order to avoid unnecessary noise. And the second setting, which is really important for fluid movements and motion blur is our shutter speed. Here is just called speed. So first we choose the resolution and in resolution you can go for either 8K 30 and 30 means FPS frames per second, or you can go for Ultra HD. And for that FPS, we need to have 1 60th shutter speed. And you see the problem here, if I use 1 60th shutter speed, everything is overexposed. And for that case, we need the ND filter. And you see they're magnetic, so they're very easy to attach like this. Let's say we have fountain behind me. If I film the fountain, you will see here, with the proper motion blur setting, everything, the water just flows very nice. If I pause the frame and you look at the footage, you see that we have the trail of movement in the shot. However, once I remove the filter, everything becomes overexposed and I need to compensate with the uh, shutter speed. In that case, I have to use the shutter speed of 1 over 500 or 1 over 1000 even, and everything becomes super sharp, super crisp, and the image just loses that fluidity of movement, that softness, and it just becomes too digital in my opinion, and it's a quick giveaway that it was shot on mobile phone, whereas with the ND filter, it just looks more natural and more pleasing to the eyes. Okay, now let me show you the ND filters in action. And I will be filming in 8K vertical video. And you will see the magic of high resolution. You see, I can zoom in close enough to cover the whole horizontal frame and then zoom out. And at the same time retain this beautiful cinematic motion blur. Amazing, right? So look, I can remove the ND filter because it's magnetic like this and you will see probably the image looks a little bit overexposed. So I can easily attach it like this magnetically and get the natural look in motion blur. And in that case, the image will be closer to DSLR camera. What's cool about this ND filter, one, because it's magnetic, but also it covers all the lenses on the phone. So I can actually switch between different modes. So I can go into portrait lens or telephoto or super wide angle lens. Well, now my favorite part, anamorphic lenses. Sometimes you don't want to have a clinical image, but rather something more artistic and cinematic. And this lens does just that. Let me show you what it can do. Now that the morphic lens is the lens that adds a lot of character to your footage and here's how I use it. You install it on the main X1 camera and it's just regular thread. You see you have to look at the mount of the lens. It has one short and one long cutout. So you just align it with the case 
twist it around and it's locked in place. So it stays here securely. And you see my image is a little bit overexposed. If I go into the pro mode, you see, yeah, it's overexposed. And here's the cool part. So the Morphic Lens came with this ND filters and I can just take the exact same ND number as I just had for magnetic ND. And I can just attach the ND filter to the anamorphic lens like this. And it's a threaded ND filter. Okay, and it's locked in place. Now it's very important to make sure your lens is leveled horizontally. If it's not aligned in that case, Case, you will get weird distortion okay and I look at the exposure it looks very good and you see we have very high dynamic range here because this building is being lit by the Sun but everything else is being in shadow so it just very huge difference in exposure values and I will be using 8k 30 FPS so what the anamorphic lens does it allows you to get wider field of view for your image so this is a lens that adds a lot of character to the video optically and adds some flares to your highlights when filming against bright source of light. And here is a quick comparison. This is the image you get without any lens on X1 camera. This is regular field of view. And now this is the image with an amorphic lens. You see how much wider the frame got. And we also get that cinematic aspect ratio. And let me know down in the comments below which one you prefer, with the lens or without lens. Let me know why. This is very important. And see what others think too. <laughs> So I'm using right now the anamorphic lens on the main camera, X1 camera. I disabled the image stabilization, but I'm using a gimbal right now because without gimbal, you cannot do any movement in the shot. You have to use a tripod, monopod, or just try to hold as still as possible because otherwise it will introduce a lot of jitters and shake. If you keep the image stabilization on, in that case, you will introduce jello effect. So the only way to use this setup as a whole, and uh, if you want to have movement in your shot, then it's to use the gimbal. And I'm using right now the gimbal, which is designed specifically for DSLR cameras. It's still portable, but it can handle a little bit more weight. It took me probably a whole day today and yesterday and trial and error before getting used to this setup. It all takes a bit of time and practice before you get the image that looks like this. And now I remove the anamorphic lens and the cool part about this whole system, so right here I have the ND filter right on the lens and I put the same exact ND filter, magnetic filter, on the camera and this is more a clinical look but with proper shutter speed. But either way you let me know which look you prefer. The clinical look from the main lens or you like the anamorphic footage with the character. Now things to know. Now you see when using this lens the image that phone captures is squeezed. There are two options for you on how to approach this. The first option you use third-party app like Filmic Pro for your phone that allows you to de-squeeze the footage and here you can select the de-squeeze ratio and in my case it's the X1.55 or you have option two is just capturing everything inside the built-in apps and then editing the footage on your computer. And personally, I use the second option because I just want the phone to do as less processing to the image as possible to preserve the most details and then just edit everything on computer and color grade as well. But of course, there is no one size fits all solution and every way has its own pros and cons. And if you want your footage to be de-squeezed inside the phone, then an app like Filmic Pro will be very handy. And it's because it already has the built-in preset for disquizing the image, but I faced a problem using this app. You see, the phone can only film 8-bit color video with the disquiz option turned on, and it's not ideal as it limits the color grading potential of the phone. So basically, you left with an option either to have a disquiz or you have 10-bit. You cannot have both at the same time. So after a long time of testing, the workflow that I've come up with is to use a built-in app with 10-bit color in pro mode, and then just disquiz everything in post by just stretching the video vertically or horizontally. Also, Freewell made these practical effect filters and they are installed individually onto each lens. So if you watched my dance sequence video, then you know that I used a similar kind of filter. So now it's also available for the S23 Ultra. So by now I think you can see how cool these filters and lenses are. But guys, I need to stay as objective as possible here when testing new products and cover not only the pros but also mention the cons. But before we dive in, please consider supporting my channel by liking this video or if you feel generous enough, sharing 
sharing this video with your friends or other Galaxy S23 Ultra enthusiasts online. So, because I spend a lot of time and effort to test these accessories, I think they will appreciate it. Now, as for the anamorphic lens, you have to be aware of the jello effect and you have to disable the image stabilization in order to avoid it. Because if you keep the image stabilization on, in that case, with the anamorphic lens, this is the jello effect you will be getting. Now, using a stabilizer or a tripod will be essential in that case. And when you turn off the image stabilization, in that case, I think the sensor of the phone is moving freely inside the camera module, which sometimes gets in the frame at the very edges. And now the video stabilization turned off completely and I'm moving the same way as I did in the previous shot. All the settings for the exposure are set to be the same. And just have a look here, trying to approach very carefully like this, moving to the side, back and forth. And you can see on the left part of the frame would get a little bit of vignetting. And I think it's not a big deal since the phone always allows to film in 8K resolution and I can crop it just a little bit without losing any details. But if you don't mind the inconvenience and care more about the quality, then this is a really great camera update that adds a lot of character to your image. And I already have a beautiful video in the making about the S23 Ultra. It's already in the editing, by the way, so enable the bell notification to not miss it. And meanwhile, make sure to watch this video next as I think it will be perfect for you and I will see you there. Bye-bye.